Hi everyone, I'm Ashwin and I'll be presenting our paper Borrow Words to Enrich Models of Lawmaking Processes. This work was done jointly with Victor Christoph, Matthias Krausplauser, and Patrick Thiran at the Information and Network Dynamics Lab, EPFL. The Internet and World Wide Web have enabled projects such as the Linux kernel, Wikipedia, Encyclopedia, and the OpenStreetMap, where large numbers of people can collaborate to achieve common goals. The functioning of parliaments and legislatures, which make and modify laws in democracies, share many similarities with such collaborative peer production systems. Studying the factors that influence their functioning is of interest to political scientists, journalists, and even the general public. Thanks to several open government initiatives in several countries, data is now increasingly available for people like us in the computer science community to work on these problems. The European Parliament, which is the main legislative organ of the European Union, is a pioneer in this regard. It publishes detailed records of, for every law, starting from the proposal of the European Commission until it becomes a final law. The overall process is quite complex, starting from the European Commission giving a proposal to the European Parliament, which discusses it within committees, before it goes to the Council of Ministers, which has to finally approve it to become for it to become a new law. However, in this work, we focus on this part here, which takes place within the committees of the European Parliament. The proposal of the commission is assigned to one of the committees of the Parliament, which is called the Reporting Committee, which has a chairperson who is called the Rapporteur. The chairperson and other members of the committee propose amendments to this proposal, which are then voted on within the committee. Some of these amendments are successful and they make it to the report, which is then presented to the whole parliament. We can ask several interesting questions related to this process. For instance, whether we can predict amendment acceptance. What are the factors that are correlated with amendment acceptance? Can we quantify their influence? Factors such as skills of lawmakers and the controversy of laws, the text that is inserted or deleted by an amendment, or the nationality or political group of the authors of an amendment, etc. To answer these questions, we need data. And to obtain this data, we scrape the European Parliament website to obtain files of the proposed amendments. From these files, we can extract the metadata of an amendment, such as the authors of the amendment, which law it is proposed on, etc. And also the text of the amendment, consisting of the original text that is proposed by the Commission, as well as a new amended text. This gives rise to an extensive and rich data set spanning two legislatures, 10 years, and over 200,000 amendments. To better understand the data, let us have a closer look at these amendments. Here is an example of two amendments that were proposed on the same article of the same law by two different sets of authors who are members of the European Parliament, MEP for short. Amendment 802 contains three edits, inserting the word copyright, replacing the word by by the phrase uploaded by users of and deleting the phrase storing etc to users. Amendment 803 contains two edits, replacing the word large by significant and inserting the phrase copyright protected. The third edit of Amendment 802 is in conflict with the first edit of Amendment 803 as well as the second edit of Amendment 803 because they propose changes on the same portion of text. All these edits, even the first two edits of Amendment 802, are implicitly in conflict with the original text that is proposed by the Commission. Now, at most one edit can be accepted within a conflict. And in the case that we show here, it turns out that the first two edits of Amendment 802 were rejected in favor of the status quo being maintained. And for the first conflict that involves this large deletion and this replacement, the deletion was rejected while the replacement was kept. And for the second conflict, even this insertion was rejected and thus the two edits were rejected in favor of the status quo being kept. Thus the final report that is presented to the parliament will have just one edit that is replacing large by significant for this portion of the law. In our previous work, we introduced a discrete choice model for predicting the edit acceptance based on the identities of the MEPs, the dossier, and the report, and the conflict structure. This model had this form. So the probability of the edit A to be accepted 
is proportional to the exponential of this term SA. And in the denominator, this term is corresponding to the sum over all the edits in a conflict. And this term corresponds to the probability of status quo to be kept. The term SA is a sum over the terms SU, which represent the skills of the MEPs who are authors of the edit A. The term DI here in the denominator represents the difficulty of editing dossier I. In this work, we enrich this model with additional features. In particular, we add explicit features, which are the metadata of an edit that we discussed previously, and the actual text of the amendment. We also introduce latent feature vectors for the MEPs and the dossiers. This enables us to capture dossier-specific skills of the MEPs. So in the previous model, we had assumed that an MEP has a skill that is valid across all dossiers, but this may not be valid in reality because an MEP has certain specific skills. For, so for example, an MEP who is more skillful for dossiers related to environment may not be that skillful for dossiers related to defense, for instance. These are the explicit features that we consider in our work. So for the MEPs that are authors of an edit, we consider their nationality, political group, and gender, and whether they are the chairman or the chairwoman of the committee that is responsible for this dossier. For the actual edit, we consider its type, whether it's an insertion, deletion, or replacement, the length of the edit, the part of the law that is being amended by the edit, whether it comes with an optional justification. And for the dossier, we consider the committee that is responsible for this dossier, and also the type of law that is dealing that the dossier is dealing. So to understand how the text features are extracted, let us consider an example. So let's consider the first edit of Amendment 803 that we saw earlier. So this edit replaces the word large by significant. We consider the deleted text and the inserted text of this edit. We also consider the portion of text that is in the original article proposed by the commission, excluding any deleted text. So this should provide context uh, for this edit. And we also consider the title of the dossier that this edit is proposed for. In this case, it's uh, copyright in the digital single market. Once we have this text, we tokenize it into words and bigrams and map them to the word and bigram embeddings that, were, that are trained using a supervised fast text model. And we average these embeddings to get the final vector representation of the text. We now describe the baselines that we consider in this work. The naive classifier predicts each outcome with the same probability, which is one over k plus one, where k is the conflict size. We also consider a stronger random baseline called the random classifier. It first learns the probability for the status quo to be accepted for each given conflict size k uh, from the training set. And then it divides the leftover probability uniformly among all the conflicting edits. We also consider the bow model that we developed in our previous work as a third baseline. Now we see the enriched models that we develop in this work. So the first of these is the bow explicit model uh, that considers the explicit features. We see that this model is very similar to the bow model that we saw previously, except that SA and DI are now explicit feature vectors that capture the features of the edit and dossier respectively. The secondly, we have the wow latent model that considers the latent feature vectors. X and Y are the feature vectors of the MEP and the dossier respectively. And it adds these inner product terms to the wow expression. And these terms help us to capture the dossier specific skills of the MEPs. Finally, we have the wow text model that considers text features. This model adds these three terms to the wow expression. The RA and RI are the text representations of the edit as well as the dossier title, respectively. We also consider all different combinations of these three models, which we can construct by keeping the appropriate terms in the exponentials. We now describe the training and evaluation procedure. Um, our data set consists of data points that are of the form of these triplets, consisting of the conflict, the dossier, and the label. And uh, given this data set, we learn the parameters by maximizing their L2 regularized log likelihood. So data set has around 100K points for each uh, of the legislatures, and we divide them into 80% per training and 10% each for validation and test. 
For the evaluation, we use the average cross entropy as the metric, and thus uh, lower values are better. So first, we'll present the overall uh, predicted performance. These two bar plots show the predicted performance for the two legislatures. The first three bars on the left are the baselines, and the models are arranged from left to right in order of increasing complexity. Uh, we see that all our enriched models outperform the baselines, and the WOW XLT model that combines explicit latent and text features is the most complex model on the right. It performs best. We now see the performance broken down by the conflict size. We see that our model outperforms both the random baseline as well as the baseline WOW model, and the improvement over the WOW model increases for larger conflict sizes. The WOW model actually performs worse than random for conflicts of size four and above, and this may be, may be partly explained by the fact that the data set is dominated by conflicts of smaller sizes, as seen from the histogram. So once we have trained a model, we can try to interpret its parameters. This is the expression for the full WOW XLT model, which contains three sets of parameters corresponding to the explicit latent and text features. First, we can try to interpret the explicit features. For this, we just need to look at the coordinates of these two parameter vectors, WE and WD, to get the important score for each feature. And it turns out that these explicit features are interpretable. So the we see that the probability of acceptance for an edit is higher if the author is, a, is female or is from the country of Latvia or if they belong to the European People's Party political group, which is a center-right group. It's also higher for short insertions, edits that are proposed by the chairperson, and also edits with justification. Now we interpret the latent features. For this, we project the latent feature vectors yi for the dossiers to a lower dimensional space. This is the plot that we obtain when we do a T-SNE plot in two dimensions of the dossier latent feature vectors. Here we select the 40 dossiers who are at the extremes of the first two principal components. We can distinguish four clusters that correspond to dossiers that are broadly related to these four topics of defense and protection, investment development, business and innovation, and environment and communications. Finally, we can try to interpret the text features. For this, we take the text parameter vectors WT and WT prime and take the dot product with the word and bigram embeddings to get an important score for each word and bigram. For the words in the dossier title, it seems that the words customs, fisheries, and bigram general budget are predictive of acceptance, while the words market, framework, and greenhouse gas are predictive of rejection of the edit. This could be because of the relative ease or difficulty of editing laws related to these topics and correlate well with the dossier difficulty parameters that are learned by the model. Moving on to the edit text, removing the bigram any other is predictive of acceptance of the edit. This bigram is commonly used to widen the scope of the law, like contractual or any other duty. Interestingly, removing the bigram human rights also predicts acceptance of the edit. Adding the word should, which is used for uh, adding recommendations in legal text is predictive of acceptance, while adding the word must, which is used for obligations, is predictive of rejection. Adding the word inserted predicts acceptance, while adding the word deleted predicts rejection. These words refer to inserting or deleting articles in already existing laws, and suggest that inserting articles are easier than deleting them. Adding the word positive predicts acceptance, while adding the word negative predicts rejection. These words are commonly used to refer to positive or negative consequences of doing something and suggest that framing in terms of achieving positive outcomes is preferable to framing in terms of avoiding negative outcomes. Finally, the words firearms, terrorist, or fingerprint, if they are present in the context of an edit, it predicts rejection of the edit. This could be because laws relating to these topics are controversial and thus it's harder for edits to get accepted. Finally, for future work, we plan to explore additional information sources and features, like the full text of the laws, to get additional insight into the process. And we also plan to make some incremental advancements on our methods, like exploring improved text representations, like learning word and bigram embeddings end-to-end, -end, and also using longer range word order beyond the bag of words representation or engrams. Thank you for your attention. The data and code for our work are on GitHub.
and feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or would you like or you would like to discuss uh,